Admiral's Log. I'm thrilled with the recent victory of one of our heavy cruisers against a British battleship. It is a testament to the skill and training of our sailors, and I'm proud to command such a capable fleet. Our cruiser captain displayed incredible strategic prowess and daring, taking down a ship with guns far superior to his own. This victory will undoubtedly send shockwaves through the Royal Navy and strengthen our position in this war. The Royal Navy's defeat is a humbling experience for them, but a significant achievement for our Navy. It shows that our Navy is capable of competing against the, at one point, most powerful naval force in the world. I believe this victory will not only boost the morale of our sailors and officers, but also provide us with more leverage in the ongoing war. Our Navy has shown that we are not to be underestimated. However, I must not become overconfident. The war is still ongoing and the Royal Navy will not back down easily. We must continue to innovate and improve our strategies and technologies to stay ahead of our enemies. We cannot afford to let our guard down, and every victory must be earned with hard work and dedication. Hey guys, still here and welcome to episode 23, where we find the battleship Yoshun doing well. A little bit of initiative because I was expecting her to be docked at or near Helgoland. We find her to the west of the British southwestern shore near the Irish Sea. This is where she has found the battleship Wager. The racehorse class, it is a new ship, I haven't seen these guys before. Six 16.3 inch guns. They're substantially larger than the battleships that we've seen so far from the Brits, but they're not very quick. 23.4 knots. Uh, those 16 inch guns might be a bit of a problem, but I have 12 15 inches. So ideally, I would outshoot this thing in a matter of minutes. And I think the battle will be over before 15 minute mark. At least that is the plan. The only downside slash factor that I cannot control is the starting range. When can we expect to spot the enemy? How long will it actually take me to fire my first salvo? And that first salvo, I am definitely going to go for an AP charge here. Because at this range, I think armor piercing right through the deck. It's possible. Especially since my deck pen... Well, actually. 15 kilometers out-ish. Deck pen. 1.9 with HE. 4.8. No, actually, I think the deck pen might not work. Parcel pen, aft deck, yep. Doesn't matter. With this ship, parcel pens can be absolutely crippling. Considering that the... Yeah. Considering that she fires a lot of these shells. So, main deck parcel, aft belt parcel, main deck parcel. The aft belt did a lot more damage than I expected. And one of the factors that the British are probably not really hoping for... Is the fact that because of all this flooding, their guns are going to be at such an angle where the ship is just unable to fire at all. I think they might have already achieved that angle. Apparently the secondary gun doesn't seem to think so. But the ship does seem to have developed a list of, what, 10 to 15 degrees to starboard? So probably sooner rather than later, she'll just be completely unable to fire. And with a few more hits... This thing is going to get just destroyed. Will I get it done before the 15 minute mark? I don't know. Perhaps? Depends on how quickly this thing will flood. I fire every 50 seconds it was? 56, yes. So I think that Yoshun is going to claim another victim without taking any hits herself. She's been shot at, certainly. But so far, no hits. So that's probably about to change. Boom! More damage, more flooding. Oh wow, they're shooting. How dare you. Not that they're hitting anything. Uh, yeah, you're done. You're flooded. Really? Sliver of health? Oh, that's annoying. <clears throat> and the water is just flowing over the deck of this battleship. She's still afloat. Do it again, Yoshun. There you go. So, before the 15 minute mark was up, another battleship has been destroyed without taking a single hit. I think we can consider this a flawless victory. 
<laughs> um, the British, interestingly, keep trying to fight. They also keep trying to sue for peace, but I just won't let them. I'm not interested in going to peace with them at all. Because I am not done with taking over terrain in Asia and building up a higher victory score so that I'm going to be able to claim more territory of theirs. Uh, potentially, it is going to be a mix between whether I'm going to take the peace offer or an ally. And that might mean that somebody else will take territory before I do. This is another one of those things that I think needs to get changed. Um, <clears throat> the UI and the game at large just doesn't tell you what's going on. Because previously we had this big window here on the left. That was part of previous wars in the campaign, showing all the combatants. So in this case, that should show British as the adversary and all my allies and myself as the opponent. I'm just not seeing any of that. It's just not there. Um, I'm not sure if I joined a war against the British or if the British are already so diminished that the others are leading the war. I'm not sure. It just doesn't tell me. Um, can I do another naval invasion at the same time? Because if possible, I will also take Weiha Wei. <clears throat> so that means I'm now invading over here. Uh, this is going to take a couple more turns. And I'm also launching an invasion over here. This one failed the previous. They still have a battleship, which I do expect to come out and play. My battleships were out on repair duty. It's the Makaho Taibo. I'm going to push those back here. Because that naval invasion is going to need a bit of fire support. we got Kaio and Setsu... And I'm also going to push those here. And I have sent an expeditionary force, which is currently operating here. Here. Yes. Um, I want to try and take Gibraltar from them. Because Gibraltar is defended by 88 men. So there really aren't that many. And if I can pull another naval invasion and take Gibraltar, that would give me a fantastic strategic position. Because with it, I can dictate who goes in and out of the Mediterranean. First, however, we're going to have to wait a little bit before these naval invasions take place. As for research, I am now happy to report that I have access to the Turtleback Armor Scheme, as well as the Krupp 5, and we're getting the Mark 1 19-inch gun. Now, I was reading some Steam reviews on this game, and I saw something I really agreed with, which is, if I'm researching big guns, don't just let me research big guns, but let me pick what gun I want to develop further. Because it's nice that the game goes, oh, here's a Mark IV, here's a random Mark I. If I am confirmed, or if I'm, I'm persistent in the use of 15-inch guns, I want to say, I'm only going to use 15-inch guns, and that's it. Research upgrades to 15-inch guns, make them smaller, make them lighter, make them more powerful, what have you. Just make it a 15-inch gun. I don't care about your 18, 19, 17-inch experiments. I don't care. I want a better version of the 15-incher. Right now you can't do that, but I think that would be a very useful upgrade to the game. Now, having access to these further armor qualities does make it, of course, interesting to start and actually go and refit the fleet, but I don't have that much shipbuilding capacity. Now, it was requested that I take a bit of time to do some refits and actually show what I'm refitting. Um, first, let's see which class I would like to refit first. I'm going to go with the battleships. The Divine Broadside is still well underway. It's going to take 33 more months. Uh, oh, I paused a ship that I was building, did I not? Because I was repairing a ship. Yeah, here, suspended. Yashima, the Shimane class, is still not done. <clears throat> if I continue her design, that's 105,000 tons. So that's basically the whole capacity filled. Whereas if I refit one of my ships, I think that'll take one month. Generally, it doesn't take too long. Although, the Citadel might be a bit of an issue. Now, what I have running around quite a lot are my Battlecruisers. So, let's select the Battlecruiser class. I think that's the Harunas. Uh, I have four of the Harunas. I have three Senyos. So, let's go into the Haruna 1925. View that. Make that a refit version. And change that ship to be more potent. To have a lot more armor and probably turtleback armor scheme. So, this ship, refit. I hope it'll fit on the ship. What do you mean they're badly placed? 
This wasn't an issue before. Here we go. Okay. Um, rip. Five. We're going from 120% armor strength and minus 40% armor weight to minus 45% armor weight and 130% armor strength. So the ship is going to displace a little less. And apparently, I don't know, replacing all the armor on the ship, which I think is basically the outer skin of the ship, is going to take one month. So just doing a whole skin transplant on the ship or an armor transplant is going to take one month. Uh, wow, you're running Citadel 2? And again, these things are ancient. They're really, really old. I can't even build new ones. Citadel 4 is going to go... I can't even tell you what the new improvement is. Because the Citadel 2 isn't there for comparison. Citadel 3 to Citadel 4 is going to give me a lot more resistance. It's going to give me more armor strength as well. Uh, of course, you got that flash fire reduction, ammo detonation chance reduction. Mine hit damage is greater. Potentially because you're kind of trapping the mine's explosion inside the hull. You're trapping it inside the shell of the turtle back. If I get that right. As for further changes to the ship, I don't think that she needs a whole lot of work. Because I haven't researched that many more upgrades. Now her main armor belt is really good. 150% armor quality means that even the fore and the aft belt really don't need work. Uh, and that's a good thing because I simply don't have the displacement left. So that's the refit for this ship. As the Haruna, I also want to upgrade the Senyos. Senyo 1925 class. They look a little weird with this turret not there. But it doesn't mean that these ships are harmless. Far from it. They are packing 10-inch guns. I haven't seen them out in the wild for a long time. So they're probably operating around Japan at this stage. I'm not really good at keeping track of what ship is where. Um, yeah, displacement is set, of course. Let's go to Citadel 4. Let's go to Group 5. It's going to take one month. Excellent. As for the guns, Mark 4, 10-inch. Semi-armor piercing shells, heavy shells, TNT 3, ideal, check, check. Uh, Coincidence 5 is okay. Armor, not as good, but then again, these are designed to take down enemy cruisers. So they're not that specifically built to deal with a lot of incoming shells. But then again, main belt is essentially 25 inches of armor. So good luck trying to pen that. And then we still got the inner deck and the inner belt. Can I add a little bit more, perhaps? Maybe make this a three inch armor belt or four inch even. What? I think the game is lagging a little bit because it. sometimes I click, there you go. It just jumped 0. 0.5. There we go. All right, so that's that ship done. It's the Senyo refit. I'm not really shifting around weapons, because the weapon loadout works. I don't need to change those. We also got the Shimane. Uh, the Shimane is still sailing around with her 15 inches. I don't believe I have to refit the Shimane just yet. Sure, her armor scheme could change, and her Citadel could use improving. But, well, how long is this going to take if I change this? Refit. How long is that going to change? Just a month. Okay. And we're going from 107,000 tons to 103 and change. Almost 104. That's a really nice upgrade. Can I speed the ship up? Yes. That still means I have a one month refit. I'll take that. After weight offset is a bit of an issue, but then again, I'm still waiting for bigger guns for this ship. I'm thinking 16s, so that she'll be able to deal a lot more damage than what she can do now. So we're going to save that design, and I'll probably have to start pushing the battle cruisers through a refit first, because they're really doing most of my work right now, and making sure that they can keep doing that work is probably going to be a really good step to keeping them around. And to winning the war with the British. Not that I need help with that. I mean, the ships are doing fantastically well as is. But 
of course you can always do better. A few months later we find the British again. This time it's the group that is pending invasion in the Strait of Gibraltar, or next to the Strait of Gibraltar. It is the battlecruiser Senyo. It's an older ship at this point. It's now March 1927 and this ship is from 1925. Still, those 10-inch guns are about to be tested because the battleship Kale, Kangaroo and Goldfinch are coming my way. Now, I'm going to kind of flip my battle group around. I'm going to have the Senyo go after the cruisers, the Dunedin, the Glasgow, the Iphigenia and the Forte. The light cruisers and all the destroyers are going to charge into the battleships because these guys carry some really lethal torpedoes and the cruiser and battle cruiser do not. So I'm going to have to make use of the Senyo and the Mogami in order to take down their cruisers. So we're kind of doing a cross battle where the, the two top ships are going to handle their smaller stuff and the three top ships are going to handle all my smaller stuff. That's the plan. No plan really survives first contact with the enemy. Um, whether this one is going to be able to get managed is another factor because I'm trying to manage quite a few ships here at the same time. So whether or not we'll be able to actually get that done, let's see. Um, for easy management, I'm going to have... No. Everybody split. I'm going to have Mogami and Senyo in the same battle group. I'm going to have uh, Salem and Yahagi in the same battle group. I'm going to have all the DDs in two separate groups. So it's going to be Nakase, Fubuki and Wakaba and... Uh... Huh, another Wakaba. Okay, even the game doesn't know what ship is where. Whatever. Uh, that's the fleet, that's the plan, that's the group. Okay. Torpedo launchers denied, unless otherwise informed. And here come their ships. So, uh, don't start avoiding people. Don't start avoiding collisions. We're going to charge right into the battleships. Because that's what we can do best. The battleships have seen better days. The Mediterranean is not a friendly place for the British fleet because these guys are engaging also with the Italians and the French. So all of them are gunning for these battleships. And it looks like the battleships have already met them. Or they've encountered a mine, I'm not sure. Okay, here is your primary target, Senyo. Senyo, go for this with your friend. Uh, cyan. I'm not sure if the Cyan's getting detected. Yeah, she's been detected. Not a problem. Now, what I really love about my destroyers is how fast they are. They can do 38 knots, and with that 38 knot speed, a battleship that's running away at 25 knots is still very easy to catch. And considering that the ship has already been damaged, I'm not sure how quickly she can really run away. Now, what is the Senyo up to? She's currently bringing all her 10 inches to bear. With a fairly poor chance to hit, I might add. Why are you using HE against that target? Because you're firing semi capitalistic right? Yeah, semi armor piercing. Go with AP. That should do a far better job. I want you to start smoking up. Make yourself very, very difficult to hit. Oh. Even more so as there's a torpedo in the water. Potentially more than one. Why is everything getting blocked? Ooh. You're productive. Look at all that. Is that all for me? That's, uh... Oof. What? What is that about? Is that about these guys? Hmm. I was wondering, why are you sending out a, a group there? But that has to do with the other destroyer group. Um, split off. I want you to torp this guy before you die. Because that might be happening much sooner than I initially planned. There's a lot of... Fairly small arms fire coming in. There we go. Nokaze has centered torps. The light cruiser 
Now we know Heavy Cruiser instantly detects the Torps. And it was expected. Why are we still pushing into a battleship? We're fighting the Dunedin. Okay. Dunedin. Torpedoes going out, but of course the battleship has been forewarned. Looks like this destroyer group is fine. So long as the Ashi doesn't do anything insanely stupid. CL over there. CLs can also do 35 knots. There's your battleship. Running. Some of these torpedoes might actually catch the target out. Oh. Excuse me for a second. Yep, we're gonna get a hit. 1300 damage? Wow. Torpedoes are such... Such random war, uh, weapons. Because sometimes you get damage to the tune of... 100. Sometimes it's 1500. And... For example, if I'm shooting at something like... Um, can I pen this? Not really. If I'm shooting at something like a destroyer. If I hit a destroyer with a 21-inch torpedo, I sometimes do absolutely no damage. It's like a hundred or so. Sometimes I'm seeing substantial different uh, damage numbers when I'm hitting a battleship. Because this battleship just took a thousand damage. So it is really difficult to predict. Also, these torps are not mine. The Dunedin's about to get hit by a friendly torpedo. Oh, this one arced. You're losing your own torpedo launchers in the process. Now they're going to start to overcorrect. And they might in fact get hit by two, maybe even three torpedoes if they play this really poorly. No, just the one. Really? Dud. Oh, you lucky bastard, you. What? Oh, you got peppered by high explosive 10 inch. Okay, I wasn't expecting you guys to be able to do that. I thought 10 inch is not good enough if I want to really deal a bunch of damage against the battleship. Apparently it is. Good lord, it's a torpedo soup today. There's torps there. Thought there was another salvo coming from a different direction. Uh, commence your panic. No, actually don't panic. Just split up. Turn this way, turn this way. You ought to be fine. No, Kaze is down. Unfortunate, but so be it. You. Go make yourself useful there. It's an outbound torpedo. Kangaroo. Turning circle. 412 meters. Black Cruiser Forte, Glasgow, and something else. Really badly damaged. You guys should be able to take this guy down. Okay, excellent. That means I can free up this destroyer to go chase down bigger fish. Much, much, much bigger fish. Go for the Forte. Uh, go for the... Actually, you go for the Glasgow. She's closer relative. You go for the Forte. You go there. Are we going to turp the Kangaroo? Or not? Another torpedo out. These light cruisers have absolute no regard for the safety of their friends. And it's starting to show. How's my battle cruiser doing? Not giving a shit. Wow. Okay. I like that. I wasn't expecting them to just shrug off most damage. Torp. Torp. We're going to do a bit of a cross torp on this battleship. Bulkheads, many. Anti torpedo blister, uh, three. Which is substantial. Anti-flood, two. Reinforced bulkheads, one. So, yeah, she has a substantial potential damage reduction going. Okay, Wakaba has launched. Damn it. This could be a knife fight and a half. Fortunately, these things are already really badly beaten up. There you go. That's all your torpedoes out of commission. Fabuki just got absolutely butchered by that battleship. But she's not done. Kangaroo managed to dodge that entire spread? Huh. 
undesirable outcome. What's happening here then? I lost a secondary gun. Okay, shotgun this thing. I know that the destroyer is over there. We're going to change direction. Oh, you're engaging that! With the port side launcher. That's a lot of initiative. I mean, the forte is right there. Cease. Launch. Shoot. Shoot. It's a decent spread, at least, against the Glasgow. She might be able to make something happen here. Starboard launchers turning at the target. Some damage going in. Come on, Yahagi. Don't worry about the Cyan. I'll do that for you. Come on, launch it now. Ooh, good dodge by Glasgow there. Hoping that she wouldn't, but she did. Yeah, we got an issue again with the guns won't fire. Ah, oh, there we go. I mean, my guns won't fire, my torpedoes won't launch, so... I got a really expensive speedboat here. I don't get it. At this point, it doesn't really matter if I launch my torps or not, because it seems like the forte is flooding anyway. Ooh. Rude. Forte is down. Excellent. Oh, look! It's the kangaroo. Which launcher did I use? The port side. So the starboard's fine. I can just charge right at the buckaroo. Kangaroo. Buckaroo. At the kangaroo. And uh, make her disappear. You and you. We're going to go for that. Battles. Ow. That's the 16 inch doing damage against the Cyan. Come on, we need to wrap this shit up, guys. Because right now, the British have done a substantial amount of damage. Fortunately, I have only lost a few ships. And those high damage numbers are instigated simply because the enemy is using... ...really high-end shells against mostly um, a lower damage type, or a lower damage... Jesus. Against a smaller ship, I'm sorry. I'm a bit distracted. Against a smaller ship, i.e. a destroyer, which is why you're seeing those vast differences. The Goldfinch and the Dunedin is still out there. Okay. Get rid of that. Launch against the kangaroo. Mogami can't really pen that. Kangaroo is making her life a bit more difficult than it needs to be. Because the ship doesn't need to be going bow... Let's say bow out. It needs to be going towards me because it's a Nelson-esque design. But she's not... Ooh, that's a pretty bad spread. She's not really using that by turning away. Okay, Yahagi and Kasu go this way. I want you and you to engage this. Torpedoes denied. There we go. We've got two hits in the kangaroo. I need to wrap up my business with this light cruiser and I need to do it quickly. And I really don't want to ram you either. Which I will, and there's no avoiding it. Damn it. Senyo, heart starboard. Mogami, heart starboard. Some flooding. Oh crap, the Cyan's also coming in here. She has rudder damage, and she has a lot of issues trying to keep the ship stable as is. So I don't need any of this nonsense. Um. It's a bit of a messy battle, this one, isn't it? Oboro, come in here. Cyan probably will sink. I don't think I can contain her flooding. Yahagi. We're going to do a drive-by on the kangaroo. And we're going to wipe that thing off the map. 
You. And you. There goes the Glasgow. Excellent. So that's another light cruiser eliminated. That leaves the Goldfinch, the Kangaroo, and the Dunedin, that heavy cruiser. Okay, prepare for broadside run. Torpedoes left. Port side. Full spread. Hello? Oh, never mind. Takes care of that. Next target, the Goldfinch. Where's your CA? I'm seeing a dead CL. I'm not seeing a CA yet. Where's the heavy cruiser at? Don't do that. My ship doesn't really respond well to getting hit by 15 inch shells. I got some armor, but probably not enough to block you. Hmm. Perhaps. I kind of doubt it. The secondary guns are getting destroyed. Main guns are taking a lot of damage. The whole ship's on fire. 27% crew lost. What I don't really understand is why I keep fighting, keep fighting all their battleships. Like, where are the French, Italian, Russian navies? What are they doing? Why am I not seeing them engage the British? Why are they not sending their battleships? There, this is <laughs> almost a cross torp by the Yahagi itself. So it doesn't matter which way the Goldfinch is going to turn, she's just not going to escape. Hit. Oh, there's the heavy. And a dud? Oh, dude. Are you here for comic relief or something? There she goes. Extensive fire. Now we're going to push right at the Dunedin. And take that guy out. Is she fast? 32 knots. I am faster. Well, I had flank. You can do 33. Not as good as I would like, but I'll take it. Chance to pen. 30%. Armor piercing. And we are going to wrap up with the last heavy cruiser that the enemy has sent this way. Now, unfortunately, I did lose a light cruiser, I think. No, the Cyan survived. Huh. I did lose a destroyer. Um, and some minor ships also took a bit of damage. So probably the whole fleet is going to come back home. Which means that I'll not be able to launch my invasion of Gibraltar. Which is what I was really hoping for. Because with that... And with taking control of the strategic position of Gibraltar, I would be in a very, very nice position for the rest of the campaign. Not that I'm not in a great position as is. What I was expecting to happen, really, as the last couple of months have cost the British a lot of their economy, is that the British Empire would just collapse. But so far, they just haven't done that. Somehow, the British keep pumping out more ships... Their economy, despite losing, I don't know, 15 to 20 transports per turn, so that's per month, they keep the empire going, somehow. And this is not the first campaign where I'm seeing this. Somehow, they're keeping the whole enterprise online, and somehow they're not losing economic growth. I mean, I'd be happy if I could just keep the economy going as is, but they're going, eh, that's cute, but we're going to keep growing the economy if you don't mind. And not by a half a percent or one percent, no, by about 11% per year. So, how the British do it, I don't know. Uh, I imagine many a politician would like to know their secrets and how exactly they're doing this. That's a lot of victory points. How many battleships do the British have left now? Because I keep knocking them down, but they just... It's like I'm playing whack-a-mole, really. They just keep popping right back up. They had 33 ships last time I checked, I think. So they lost another 7 or so? Yeah. The, the British really should be hurting at this point, but it just seems like they're not. The mighty Royal Navy. It works in mysterious ways. Come on, game. I'm clicking. Thank you. Calais, Glasgow, Forte. Yeah, this already happened. I think they got a bit worse. Look at that. 10, 11, 18, 19, 27, 42, 50 transports. No, 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 no. 
Battle of Malaya, Battle of Wei Hai Wei. How many ships the bridge got left? What are we looking at? Oh, good lord. Brits, Brits, Brits. 33. Still? Oh, they're counting submarines as well. They got four battleships. Six heavy, six light, six DDs. That's it. So totally effective surface combatants, 22. That's it. That's not a whole lot for the mighty Royal Navy. 313,000 tons. They're fixing 25 and they're building 500. Look at that. Economic growth, 5%. How? I don't understand. Where can I invade? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, sure. Northeast England. Because that seems like a fantastic idea. NE England. Here. 134,000 men and massive minefields. I still have Helgoland. I still got my battleships and battle cruisers over there. And they're still doing a lot of work. There's still minefields everywhere, and none of my ships are really capable of dealing with mines anyway. Situation in southern France has not yet been resolved. It's still under Italian control. As for the rest, there's not too much interesting happening, I think. Oh yeah, the Brits were launching an invasion from South Africa, was it? Bechuana land. Yeah. They got 17,000 men, and I have just shy of a million. Cute. Okay. Um, there's naval invasion. Proceeding as planned. The other naval invasion. Proceeding as planned. Very good. The British continue to lose terrain. Does that mean it's going to cost them the game? It's going to cost them their existence? I don't know. The British have a way of coming back from all of these losses. And I would like to know how they do it. Oh wow, there's more. Anyway, that'll be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you soon for more.